These are the gifts of the goddess, love, joy, and peace. Gifts of the goddess, are you ready to receive all the gifts of the goddess? Love, joy, and peace. Gifts of the goddess, are you ready to receive? Love, are you ready? Joy, are you ready? Peace, are you ready? Are you ready to receive? These are the gifts. is how you do it, folks. How about it for the music team? That is how you do it. When, when I was 15 years old, I was a knuckle-headed band geek at, at band camp, and I locked eyes with my first girlfriend across this crowded auditorium. That was 49 years ago. I met the love of my life and my soulmate that she is also the president of our board of trustees. She's doing a pretty good job, would you say? Yes. She, she has a way of bringing out the best in everybody around her, including me. So, Colleen, gotcha. So, in honor, in honor of our anniversary, I have with me a top 10 list. You want to hear it? Yes. All right. These are the top 10 things you will never hear Colleen say. She's never said it and she never will say. The number 10, the number 10 thing you'll never hear Colleen say. That's fine. It's okay to pull your sister's hair. Oh. <laughs> N number nine. Number nine. The curfew is just a general time to shoot for. It's not like I'm running a prison around here. <laughs> number eight. It's good that you're throwing a tantrum in church. Go ahead. Just let your emotions out. <laughs> Number seven, I understand that your vegetables don't taste good. Just leave them right there on the plate. <laughs> Number six, let me smell that shirt. Yeah, it's good for another week. <laughs> Number five, your screaming is music to my ears here in the grocery store. <laughs> Number four, yeah, I used to skip school a lot, too. <laughs> Number three, how on earth can you see the TV sitting so far back? <laughs> Number two, don't bother wearing a jacket. The windshield is bound to improve. <laughs> and the number one thing you will never hear Colleen say, I don't have a tissue with me. Just use your sleeve. <laughs> Happy anniversary. I love you. Let's all stand and sing Surely the Presence. Surely the presence of God is in this place. I can feel 
Now we're going to acknowledge and light the Christ candle behind me. We take this moment to celebrate the Christ within each of us, knowing we are divine expressions of God. And now please join me in reciting our mission statement. We welcome all as we create loving community, teach universal truth, practice spiritual principles, and live life abundantly. Amen. Reverend Sharon, do you want to do the opening prayer? And stand up, please. If, you, if you're able, if you can't, it's fine. And repeat after me. Divine Beloved. Divine Beloved. I am grateful. I am grateful. To be filled with such love and compassion. To be filled with such love and compassion. That I am open to doing for others. That I am open to doing for others. That I give from my heart. That I give from my heart. That I give with joy. Being a wonderful expression of you. Being a wonderful expression of you. I cannot lose what I give. I cannot lose what I give. Therefore, I am not fearful. Therefore, I am not fearful. I am filled with a joy. I am filled with a joy. That giving is my nature. That giving is my nature. And so it is. And so it is. Amen. Amen. All right, you may sit. All right. And as we pray, whenever I feel concern about your well-being, I turn within to pray. My thoughts are prayers. Therefore, I elevate my thoughts to the God standard. My mind is one with the divine mind, knowing my divine identity and yours. All the strength, vitality, and wisdom that I am is also the truth about you. I summon these divine qualities so that I stand steady in my thoughts about you, transforming my concerns into trust and fear into faith. I envision you spiritually strong, whole, wise, and well. I breathe with you the knowledge that, that your challenge resol resolves, your hurt heals, your health revives and your peace of mind returns as you claim your divine identity. My concerns evaporate as I bless you and behold your oneness with God. And so it is. Amen. In our affirmation for today, I am the perfect child of God, therefore I do not inherit sickness. Let's all stand and sing, O oh, Mother God. O oh, Mother God, flowing through our hearts, we give thanks for the bread of our lives, for the hands in the earth and the fruit of your womb, O oh, Mother you 
wash over me and this joy in my heart I will share with the world, oh Mother God, oh Mother God, blessed be. standing <laughs> Stephanie so we have recently revived an old tradition we had of greeting each other with a handshake or a hug now if you're not comfortable and don't want to be hugged or just give a nice little namaste so take a moment and uh, greet your neighbor The daily word for today is blessing for mothers. I know what you're thinking. That's not a daily word. That's three words. I get it. There's nothing quite like a mother's love, so nurturing, caring, and warm. Today, I bless the women in my life who express this love in all they do, whether it's the woman who raised me or any of the other women I know who so generously shared a mother's love. I have felt the care of God through their tender touch and encouraging words. I bless them and pray they know the love of God as they have shared it so generously with me. And now let's all stand and sing Heart of the Mother. I am one with the heart of the mother.
Maui sing, Purdy. I think, I think we should take this on the road. What do you say? Who's with me? Just one? Okay. Do we have any visitors with us today? And, and you're willing to admit it. We got one in the back there. We've got a welcome packet for you. Welcome. Got another one in the back over here. Hey, Sue, we've got another visitor in the back over here. Well, welcome, y'all. We hope we'll see a lot of you in the future. Let's now prepare for meditation. In the silence there is peace. In the silence there is unspoken joy. In the silence there's release from a world full of chaos and noise. So I wait for these precious moments when I hear all that could never be said and right here in this holy silence I find God I find myself in the silence there is peace in the silence Let's take a deep breath in, breathing in anything that doesn't belong and exhaling it out to the universe to become nothing. And then let us take another deep breath in, going to soul center, tapping into the light within. And allowing that light on the exhale to flow through every cell and fiber of your being. And let us take another deep breath in, tapping into the love, mingling with the light, feeling that presence. And on the exhale, seeing that love and that light fill your body with positivity with completion, with wholeness. And in our last deep breath, breathing in, going into the love and to the light and feeling the silence, the peace, the knowing, and exhaling it through your body and out into the world. Di Divine Beloved, I am yours. Change me now to be the instrument of your glory. Use me to do good in the world. Lead me on the path 
of my highest good. I open myself up to let go of resistance, to let go of unworthiness, to accept I am unconditionally loved. Today, God, what would you have me do? What would you have me say? And where would you have me go? I am open and I am yours. And I am listening. I am calm in your support. I am calm knowing that what I do, I am safe. And I fearlessly move forward being a steward of your work. And thank you, Father, Mother, God, for trusting me to do my work and what is mine. And I know that you are me, I am you, and we are one. And so it is. Amen. So I wait for these precious moments when I hear all that could never
You guys do such a great job. Yeah. I hope you, when you look in the mirror, you say, I'm a great musician. You know? <laughs> God sings through me. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You know, it's kind of loose, and I worry about do, getting too animated and it flying across the room. But it is, it is stuck to me, so it'll only go so far. All right, so today's topic, I thought it would really be great to talk about one of the co-founders of Unity. It actually was the person who kind of started it, and it's Myrtle Fillmore. Now, I'm not going to really go into her history. I will tell you she's seven of eight children, and through her life, she was always very sickly. But she was also a person that really had a curiosity for learning and doing more. And um, she would steal her brother's books and go read them because, you know, girls had other things to do. And um, she became a teacher, and that's where Charles met her, was in Denton, Texas. And um, he immediately was impressed with her. And I think she was like seven years older than him. I'm not sure, but it's something in that. She was older. Um, but, you know, he was all ready for this marriage. She's she like, mm -mm, mm mm She made him court her several years before they actually got married. But during this process, she was always dealing with ill health. Now, her diagnosis was tuberculosis. Now, I like to preface that by knowing that that was the given diagnosis for most things at that time. If you had breathing issues, it's just like autoimmune diseases. You know, they might put you with um, valley fever or lupus. I mean, sometimes it's because they don't know what to give you. But she had a lot of different ailments, and she was always trying to figure out how to take care of this, how to move through it. And so you've probably heard me tell you about this, but so she went to a conference, and, you know, at this point there weren't cars, so they, you know, horse and buggy or however they got there. And Mer uh, Charles took her, and it was uh, E.B. Weeks, and he was a student of Emma Curtis Hopkins, so when you study your unity, you kind of learn this family tree thing. 
And so Emma Curtis Hopkins was a big teacher for the Fillmores. But one of the things he said that she recognized was this, was this, if she felt it inside, I am the child of God, therefore I do not inherit sickness. I like to add perfect child of God and usually use the word illness. But um, because, you know, we all are perfect. Can't you tell? Okay. <laughs> so it's kind of, but she, but this for her was so moving. Like whatever was said in her, she felt it. She owned it. She knew this was true. This is true. This is the truth of who I am. I am this child of God. Therefore, I can't be sick because if God is in me, I'm right with the world. And she started working on this process, but, and she would go into a meditation that she has written and shared in some of her works. But she would talk to every organ in her body, and she'd tell it how wonderful it was and how much she appreciated it, and to also forgive her for her negative thoughts that had consumed it. And, you know, have, are any of you familiar with, like, Louise Hay, You Can Heal Your Life? Right? And, you know, there's the illness with the affirmation. And so, like, you know, kidney or bladder infections mean being pissed off, right? <laughs> There's these things you can kind of relate to. But she really would go in and she would do this. But as she was doing this, she was building a more intense relationship with God, with the divine. It wasn't that she was separating herself from God or saying, I can heal this now. She was giving it over to God, but she was owning that her actions and what she did would be, would be the outcome of her environment, right? And that's one of the fifth unity principles, right? We live the truth that we know, but it's also in how we do and what comes back in that. And she was very, very focused on this healing. And after two, two years... She was like so much better. She was better. So you see, it wasn't like 24 hours, right? How long does it take your body to get sick when you're giving it these yucky thoughts, right? I'm unhappy. I hate my life. I hate my job. You know, my partner drives me nuts. Whatever those things are, they eat at you, right? And so it doesn't happen overnight. Your body doesn't get sick overnight. But she fell in love not just with herself, she fell in love with God. She fell in love with this wonderful creator that was giving her this potential to do good in the world. And one of the things that she learned in this and where she was so willing to share was, like again, praying. And so Unity started, Silent Unity started as a prayer group. And before that, it was kind of like this esoteric group. But but the Fillmore's did not want unity to be a church. They did not want it to be a religion because they believed that the unity practices can benefit any belief system. Because what it is is connecting with God and knowing that you're loved, that you are already whole, that you're not broken. But her vision in this, and as she would talk to people, and you know, some people say, well, what about like, you know, I've got these people around me that aren't taking care of themselves. You know, and so what do I do about that? And she's, she kind of tells them, well, is it your business? And what are you doing for those people? Are you giving those people love? Are you giving those people patience? Are you giving those people understanding? Right? So it's about, so she was all about the giving nature of God. And she wasn't worried about if there would be enough money. You know, and, and one day we'll go over there covenant of dedication of when they founded Silent Unity and how they wrote this beautiful, beautiful covenant, her and Charles, that they would do the work that was theirs to do and God would do the work that was God's to do, which meant making sure that the things that they need were provided while they, without worry or concern, would do their work. And for her, it was love. It was compassion. It was giving. How can I give to you? How can I help you? Now, I know that sometimes in our lives, we get very, we're over giving. And, you know, have you ever been in that point where you're so depleted, you don't even think there's anything in that glass, right? Sometimes, I don't know, I've been in the place where I felt like my glass broke and was shattered. And then the issue is, well, what piece do I pick up first, right? We've had that. But here's the thing is that it's not about that we're not we're to neglect taking care of ourselves, but if we do things and give things with love and
and with joy and know that it's okay. So how many of you have been in the grocery store and all of a sudden you hear that voice in your head, pay for that person's groceries or buy that person, pay for that person's McDonald's or whatever. And so some of you might go, okay. And some of you might go, um, but God, you know, the water bill's coming up, right? <laughs> you know, I got the water bill. I got to think about that. So when, but when we do this, we feel better. And it's not about like knowing if they really needed it or not. It's about following that, but it's about giving it with the heart. It's about giving it with the love and the understanding. And so for us to grow, it's not just about me saying, oh, watch me do this, and I'm going to manifest this in my life, and I'm going to create this. It's also like, what am I willing to give? What am I willing to give to you? What am I willing to give to the world? What am I willing to share? And sometimes it's not sharing my bliss. Sometimes it's not about sharing the work that I'm actually doing. It might be that God directs me another way, you know, to share in a way that I'm not expecting to do that. And Myrna was very unconditional with that. And she had this great faith that no matter what she did, it would be okay. It would be okay. Now, Myrna, Myrna was also a woman that knew what she wanted, right? Right? And she knew she didn't like to cook, so she didn't cook. When they built her house, they didn't include a kitchen. You know, the, they went, they, the, the kitchen was built in his mother's house, and this was on Unity Village. Did you know Unity is like its own town, like its own city, you know? And it's like, um, but they just would go over to Mother Fillmore's, and, and she'd have the food. But Myrtle didn't like that. There were things that Myrtle didn't like. But she would give love. She would give understanding. But here's the thing is if she didn't like cooking, that means that nobody had heartburn if she wasn't cooking. <laughs> they all say don't cook when you're mad, right? It puts it into your food. Well, we lived in Arizona. There's this little mining town called Bisbee. Anybody been there, familiar with it? It's like a hippie town. And, uh, but it used to be a mining town. It's really wonderful. But there was this restaurant that we used to go to, and they had a sign. And it said, the person cooking your food loves their job. And isn't that where you want to eat? Like, if you go somewhere and you hear them yelling at each other, you're going, oh, God. Oh, no, I'm in trouble. <laughs> yeah. I'll just take the soup from yesterday. <laughs> but it's like she, but what, what Myrtle was teaching us was it's not just about saying prayers. It's not just about loving us and being worthy to us. It's about loving and being that divine energy of caring for your neighbor, of caring for another person, of caring for humanity, right? And it was having a heart so big that we can reach out. And have any of you ever had those moments where it, it just could have come by surprise that all of a sudden you could have been in a dream state or a meditative state, but all of a sudden you were feeling all this power of unconditional love? Has anybody ever experienced that? Because it can come in so strong, it's almost scary because you don't know if you're going to explode or not with all this love. You know, but it's like this light comes in, this wonderful oneness. And then it's like, oh, I want it back, I want it back. But the thing is, what's happening is we always have it. We haven't lost it. It's bringing it forward. But the more that we're loving and giving towards others, the more that we are, we are loved. And the more that comes to us. And so, you know, that wonderful book and the movie called The Secret that everybody was into, how many people worked it so hard, so diligently, and yet didn't get anything accomplished? <laughs> right, so it was like, well, I'm doing everything, right? Because you know what? They were leaving out something important. We were giving with the expectation of what we would get. We were so focused on that outcome. We were so focused on what was ours. Mine, 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 you know? We were so focused on how that was supposed to be that they left out something important. It was to, we are worthy of all the good that, that can come to us. But if we are set that it's just about what we're going to get, it doesn't work. And so it's like even when we tithe, if we're tithing, okay, that 10% and that, why is it 10%? That 10% is 
to say, okay, God, I trust you. I'm giving you what is yours, because really it's not your money anyway, it's God's. Okay. I'm giving you what is yours, and I'm going to trust that you're going to bring it back to me. But if I go, I'm giving it to you, but now you need to get me a new car, <laughs> it's not the same, right? So it's like, it's about giving and knowing that I don't feel like I have a lot, but I'm going to trust you. I'm going to give you that 10%. And I'm trusting you, God, that, that you're going to take care of my water bill. You're going to take care of my electric bill. You're going to take care of getting the tires on the car. And it, but it's coming with this great love and this excitement to know that we don't need to worry. That everything is taken care of because God is our source. God is that wonderful divine energy that's flowing through us out into the universe, making things happen. And you can go, I can't change the world. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of scary stuff. Do what is yours to do. And if all you know to do is to say prayers for people, say prayers, but not prayers about, okay, God, make them realize that they're wrong. <laughs> not that kind of prayer, you know. God, thank you that our world is already at peace. God, thank you that each child has a meal to eat today. God, thank you that the elderly are cared for and loved. Do you see the difference? You know, and it's, and it's a wonderful thing, and that's what Myrtle was teaching us. Myrtle was not just teaching us how to pray and how to be affirmative and how to work with the mind. Myrtle was teaching us to let God lead us in the unexpected ways with faith and wonderful things. And Greg and I and Rick were having a conversation earlier, and, you know, we were talking about, like, what, how do you think about things with Myrtle Fillmore? What could we say about that? Now, Myrtle wasn't Myrtle's really na real name. It was a nickname. Now, I can't remember right now what her name was. I know the middle name was Paige. But <laughs> I can't remember what her first name was. But it was a nickname that her father had started. But um, their last name is Fillmore. All right, so, you know, you can take the 12 powers, and I'm not going to be able to remember them all at, the, at this moment because, you know, you're testing me. But feel more love. Feel more life. Feel more imagination. Feel more order. Feel more will. Feel more joy. Feel more abundance. Feel more I mean, I just kind of think that's so appropriate. Now, that's where I got my tingles. But it's, like, but it's like allowing that wonderful energy. So that she brought to us, and they brought to us this wonderful ability. So when Myrtle healed herself, and Charles was seeing that, Charles was like, and he was a man of science, you know, I got to see that. He started practicing, and he had an injury where he fell with skating, and it hurt his hip, and his leg was shorter. And he was always in pain, and that's why he had the cane. But he started working on it, and his leg did grow some. I mean, they, they did straighten it out, and he was not in the pain that he was, but there, was, there still was a slight limp. And so with him, that was like so eye-opening that he's going to see what else can I do with that. And they were coming from two different places. They were both coming from a state of love, but Charles was focused on what all these things I can do with my mind when I believe it, you know, and, and getting that in order. And Myrtle was coming from what I call that nurturing place. Do love. Live love. Be love. And if you're judging your neighbor for something that they're not doing, you need to ask yourself, well, how am I showing up that way? Am I doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing? Am I loving in the way that I'm supposed to be loving? Am I forgiving in the way that I'm supposed to be forgiving? I mean, she would tell you, you know, to kind of get your head out of the sand. And she would say, there's only one reason your life is the way that you, the way that it is now, and you created it. I mean, she had a, one, a better quote, but basically it was like, you're where you're at because you created it. You can uncreate it. But what are you doing with the love? Where is the love in your actions? And so, like, let's go back to the book of The Secret. Where was the love in that, in the love of, like, it's not just for me, it's for mankind. What I, where I'm going, what I'm doing, what am I going to be able to give mankind, humankind, for that? I guess I need to change that because that's not diverse. What am I doing for humankind? 
Where is that going to lead me? What am I going to do? I just can't wait. Just can't wait to see what's next. And again, it's not about looking and counting every person in the world. It's about how can I love where I'm at? Be in love with the God within me. Be in love with me and love you. And love you. Love humanity. Love Mother Earth. How am I taking care of that? And Myrtle had two loves that she really liked. And she was all about social justice and stuff. But there were two issues that she worked hard on was, was children and the earth and caring for the earth. Those were two big ones. And so they, she had started We Wisdom, which was a magazine. And then we have, I know that we have two unities, one in California and one in Florida, that actually have a We Wisdom Montessori school based off of that. But that, that magazine went for many, many, many years um, with that. But, those, but she was all about women's rights. She was about equality. She cared about how are we taking care of our children? How are we nurturing them? Are we giving them the understanding that they matter and that they have a voice and that they have a right and that they have love? And that's the thing, is that wonderful divine energy within us, if we want to call it our mother, father, God, is always giving us this love. Like, we operate on God fuel. We don't have to pay for it. It doesn't run out. It's infinite. Like, my being powered by God is not taking away your God power. It's not in competition with your God power. And you're, whatever you're doing with your life is none of my business, Right? Because sometimes we won't do our thing because we think it's we're going to fight with somebody else about what they do. It's not, it's, not any, it's not our business what someone else is doing. Are we doing what we need to do out of love and, out of, and not out of competitiveness, competitiveness? And are we being compassionate? Are we being kind? And are we trusting and having faith in everything that we know and do that we are doing spirit's work? And so I want to leave you with this thought today to live from your divinity and to not be afraid to do what you are guided to do, to not be afraid to open your heart and to love humanity and bless humanity. And if you are a news watcher of saying, bless them, God, for they know not what they do. Right? Don't get mad. Bless. And then again, see it as healed. See it as done. All right. Namaste. And if you would join me in our blessing offering. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. Gratitude before me, gratitude behind me, gratitude to the left of me, gratitude to the right of me, gratitude above.
share it if you would. Divine Beloved, thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed on us. And we affirm that we are healthy, wealthy, and whole. And we are fearless givers because we are open receivers. And so it is. Amen. And amen. So back in the day, we had a full nursery back there full of a bunch of screaming memes. And at the end of the service, most of you, re most of you remember this, at the end of the service, the kids would all march in, come down the aisle, and they'd have big smiles on their faces and we'd be proud that they had made or artwork or whatever craft that they had done. Invariably, one of the kids would act up adorably and we'd all just get a big kick out of that. <laughs> and that is the next evolution of us as a community is we've got to manifest that again here. So we have started a manifestation where we are going to bring that back to our so I'm going to sit here, and we are going to together do the children's blessing. <laughs> no, we're going we're gonna to sing them in. Oh, we're come gonna, on. Look yeah. at this. Hey, sing. You are walking in the light, in the light, in the light. You are walking in the light, in the light of God. In the light, in the light, in the light, in the light. In the light, in the light. <laughs> We love, we love you, you. We, we bless you, you. we behold, behold the Christ, Christ in you, and we love you just the way you are, one with God. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Aw. <laughs> you guys are good. It's working. Wow. That's cool. Good stuff. All right. Uh, what am I missing here? Announcements next? Yeah. Okay, we have, we have a lot going on. There's a lot of things going on, so I have quite a few announcements here. The first one is, is close to me. It's personal. Um, we do a lot of good work here as a group. We do Toys for Tots, Melinda and David Head Up, um, Days for Girls. Um, check them out. Uh, we, just, we do a lot of good. But we have grown to the point where we can do even more. We can do more good around here. So I've been asked to head up a community service effort. I'm going to organize us and get us out there into the world and doing more good. Who's with me? One? All right. All right. Yay. Oh. So um, there's a, there's a sign-up sheet in the lobby. We'll think together what kind of good we want to do, and then we'll get out there and start doing some good. There you go. There you go. Enjoy a Just for Fun class with Reverend Sharon on Saturday, May 20th, this coming Saturday, at 10 a.m. Experience a tea leaf reading class where you will explore your destiny with every sip of tea. I know Colleen's been collecting teapots at uh, thrift stores, so uh, bring shareable snacks. Please sign up in the lobby so we know how much tea to prepare. Today is the last day to sign up. We need to know ahead of time how many people are coming, so today's the last day to sign up. And if any of you have vintage tablecloths, please drop them off by Friday. So we'll have a tea party, learn how to read the tea leaves, and just have a little fun together. Sure. Um, I know that in unity, sometimes it's like, well, you know, when the Spirit moves me. Well, if the Spirit doesn't move you today to sign up, please don't show up with, you know, five of your friends on Saturday because there's a lot of preparation to do. So I'd rather you sign up and not show than to have 10 people shine up and we're like scattering to try to figure out how to make it happen. Fair enough. <laughs> Coming up on June 3rd, Unity of Dayton will be participating in the Greater Dayton LGBTQ Pride Festival. If you want more information, see Scott Denman. Scott, are you here today? I don't think I saw him. But no, they were visiting mothers. Oh, <laughs> good boys, good boys. Okay. The following Saturday, June 10th, we'll have a booth at the Yellow Springs Street Fair. Victoria Heron, Victoria, raise your hand. Victoria is heading up the uh, Yellow Springs Festival, so see her if you want to volunteer for the festival. And then Friday, June the 2nd, at 6 p.m., we're doing training 
for both the Pride Festival and the Yellow Springs Festival. So if you're planning to go and participate in either one of those, it's strongly encouraged that you come Friday night right. for that training. And so that you can know what the training is, is first of all, if I said to you, what is unity? How easy is it to come out of your mouth? <laughs> so of knowing that, but, but also of knowing, again, we are, we are an inclusive spiritual community and we want to make sure that our language and what we're doing and saying at these events is appropriate. So this is a, a way to make sure that we are on board with our unity beliefs and what we are supporting. And so if you don't even want to be in the festivals, but you want to learn about that, you can come. There you go. So. For 12 Fridays, beginning June 2nd at 10 a.m., you're invited to join Bob Coates. Bob, raise your hand. There's Bob. You're invited. Hey, Bob. Bobby. You are invited to join Bob Coates for a transformative book study on The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. And he has done this in the past, and I've gotten nothing but great feedback that it's worthwhile. He does a great job with that class, so hoping you will join him. Finally, finally, all right, just checking. Finally, I have the last announcement. May 26th is the next Messages from the Other Side, where Reverend Sharon reaches across the veils of time and space to share messages from past loved ones. It's $20, the doors close promptly at 7, and no children under the age of 12. And as Sharon would say it, it's not 7 p.m. unity time. The doors close at 7 <laughs> p.m. because it just messes up the energy if, if you walk in late, okay? So with that, mm -hmm. why don't we oh, stay... Oh, the book nook. Um, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, the book nook. I missed that. It's the first floor. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I was just testing. I was just testing. Just testing. She's on it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, we're going to be shifting the book nook into a spiritual gift store and hopefully a profit center. And we want your help to give it a brand new name. There's a suggestion sheet in the lobby where you can share your ideas for a new name for the book nook. And at the end of May, we're going to everybody vote on the new name. So think of a really fun, creative name, and we'll rename the book nook. And you can make as many suggestions as you want. There you go. And with that, why don't we all stand and sing, Let There Be Peace on Earth. recite with me the prayer for protection. The, the light of God, of God surrounds us. us. The, the love, love of God, God enfolds us. us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. And wherever we are, God is and all is well. Do you think that the spook nook was
so glad we ditched that piece. We just, it was just, we lived.